everyone. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our very exciting webinar we're having with Glenda Fulion today. Um, I really need to thank everyone. Our Merlot range has sold out in less than three weeks. So for your support, we are just so very humbled. Really, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We've managed to get some of the overrun from the printer. So we have got 100 sheets of each left. And after that, it is officially done. So all kudos go to Glenda. Well done. Thank that's you. Wonderful. Well, that's all of them that have liked what we've done. So oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> thank you so much for your support. So today, we're going to be switching cameras um, just for the fact that uh, we want to show you how it works and what Glenda's doing rather than our faces. So you'll be seeing only the artwork from now on. Uh, so please let us know what the feedback is. We have got chat room open, so you can please give your comments and leave your name and your email address so we can make sure we send you the link to the recording afterwards um, and as well as a special surprise at the end. So over to Glenda. Okay. Hi, ladies. I hope you are all having a good time and um, doing lots of crafting during lockdown. Um, or these unprecedented times. So uh, for me, this is my safety haven. This is where I go to escape. This is what I love doing. So let's share a couple of ideas using Merlot. Um, and we're going to be using really simple techniques today, but also effective techniques using the products that we have um, and um, just having fun doing what we love, crafting and scrapping. But before you do any of that, remember, this is all about creating memories documenting your life so don't be scared to write on your layouts don't be scared to put down the good the bad and the ugly i think we've all gone and caught up in a whole trap where we like to make it look very pretty and becomes a work of art rather than documenting our life story so i urge you to please even if you take the layout at the end if you don't like your handwriting take the layout and at the back of the layout just document all the five questions, the who, why, where, what, um, so that in time to come, you think you might remember all the facts, but it is a good idea just to um, document them at the back of the layout. Absolutely. Okay, so that's where we're going to start off with. Today I'm going to um, show you two layouts that I've created. These are not Christmas layouts. You can do this one. Okay. The first one is the, um, the single layout, which I'm going to do a lot of the techniques on this one. I'm using the lace decorative strips, so I'm going to give you some ideas on how to use that one. And also the chipboard um, that is engraved on how to, to use those as well. Okay. All right, and then this one we're going to start off with um, is I just wanted to show you how to use... Um, a new product called the Nuvo um, Crackle Mousse. Um, and if we can zoom in, can I lift it up? All right, this one here. Okay, this one here, over here, I'll show you this in more and more detail where I've used the Crackle Mousse, which is an absolutely amazing product. It dries in virtually no time and you can then work with distressed oxides or distressed ink into it to add a bit of dimension as well. So this one has got very little in terms of lots of technique on the chipboard because of it being engraved. It is clean, so you can actually use it natural on, on your layouts. All right, so let's get started. Okay. All right. All right, so the first of all, we're going to work with the Merlot range, the one of the layouts, um, one of the backgrounds, um, and we're going to place the lace stencil onto the um, paper. I have used a, a Wendy Becky Make Art Station because it is, allows me to work with magnets and to, to basically secure the stencil without having to worry about will it move, will it be able to lift, etc., etc., and it takes the stress away from just the normal stencil glues. Okay, so I'll put it down. Um, I'm going to now use a silicon brush, um, and this is the crackle mousse. This is called Russian White. 
all right it is almost like a, a pearlescent white so this is really great you can just scoop it up with your silicon brush and you can apply it onto the stencil now the thicker you will use it the more intense the crackles appear um, through the the product okay so the thinner it becomes more like a glaze and the thicker it is, the more cracks um, appear as it dries. Now, as you know, um, any crackle uh, paste, whether it's a, a, a normal uh, range of product, crackle will only appear if you leave it to dry naturally. The crackle will not appear if you use a heat tool on it. Um, it actually um, doesn't work. So this is uh, something that you need to dry. Um, I'm not going to do too much of it because I did lots of it around the whole of the layout. But I'm going to just move this across. Okay. And when you lift, stencil, there is the lace pattern. I have done it quite thickly so that the cracks will start to appear. But I have to leave this and set it aside so that we can then um, wait for the crackles to appear depending on the temperature it is about 20 minutes to half an hour uh, before the crackle starts to appear on the on the paper so I'm going to just move this out and now I'm going to start working with um, the uh, I am not working on the on my normal glass because the light reflects onto the glass so I'm just doing this with a normal um, non-stick craft mat and we're going to work with that. Now, the first one we're going to work with is our um, lace embellishments or decorative strips. Now, there's four of them, and one of them is our uh, engraved. All right, so I'm just going to cut them. As you all know, that our, our board that we use for our chipboard is a high quality and it's glossy. So it really withstands a lot of the products and it doesn't disintegrate while you're working. So to start off with, we are going to now use our black um, dilutions paint and we are going to use our um, ink blending tool. Um, just remember to shake the dilutions paint. It's got a mixing ball in it. All right. And you can just put a dot on it. And now we are going to pick up and we are going to just dab the paint onto it. As you can see, a dot goes quite a long way, and you can see when it's absorbed into the, the sponge, um, it really, really covers really well. Um, and because you don't have the run, run, paint running down the side of the chipboard, you can then save paint. Remember the little PD um, on the bottom of the chipboard is for you to hold on to so you don't get your fingers painted. Mine still get painted, but um, it tends to help a little bit. Okay. And as you can see, it's already virtually dry. Just to make sure, we're going to just heat set it. Well, won't this work? It's not plugged in. <laughs> we moved it. <laughs> Do it now. All right, I'm just going to leave it here for now just to dry in the meantime. And I'm now going to move on to the other one. Now, you can see here where I've cut, you've left with little burrs. Okay, I either use a craft knife or you can use a nice pair of sharp scissors just to cut away the burrs. Thank you. <laughs> Don't do what I do and leave it running and burn everything. Or spill alcohol into whatever you're on your table. Mm hmm. All right, so we're going to just trim off the pieces. Now, when you see, you'll see that it now leaves a little white core. Um, you can just cover that either with ink or you can use the distress markers. Um, I used frayed burlap um, or antique linen or ground espresso, depending on what I'm working with, so that I can actually cover those with the distress markers. But for now, I'm not going to worry about that because we are going to use the distress spray stain which is hickory smoke you can use black soot it really is up to you i like um, the hickory smoke because it's almost got a little bit of a, a, a gun metal finish when you finish all right okay now 
if you have a look, you'll see. Here's my web we got. All right, so as you do that, all right, can you see that the stay sprain does not work onto the chip onto the glossy chipboard because it is a water based. What happens is, is it now um, just wipes off, but can you see that it actually goes into the chipboard? All right. Now, would it be different with Distress Oxide ink? Absolutely. Don't you get mine out of my bag for this afternoon's one? All right. So you can see here, you can see now it has colored it. It's in the back. All right. So here, you can see it has gone into where the engraved areas are. Now, you can either cover it on top with an ink, or you can now um, use other products on top of that. All right. So let's go. Now, could we add other colors? Could we add a different um, oxide color on top of it? Absolutely. I'm going to use Black Soot Distress Oxide Spray. Remember, the oxide spray, you need to just give it a shake so that you can mix. Okay, now I'm going to show you on top of this exactly the difference between the two. All right, can you see how the oxide will actually start to penetrate further into and actually sit on the chipboard, whereas your normal distress will not work with that? Okay. It's very nice blending when you just like move it left and right to kind of yeah. see more. Okay. Okay. All right. So you can see now the difference had I left it without that because the board, because it's glossy, um, needs a product that is going to actually attack will have tooth onto the um, onto the actual chipboard. All right. So now the other one we've now primed. I'm going to leave that one here. All right, and now we're going to do a couple of things. First of all, we're going to use some of the sparks. Um, this is called butterfly spells. All right, and we're going to open this. I like to shake it a little bit because what happens when you shake, the paint then lands up onto the lid of your paint pot and you don't have to then mess uh, or try and dip into the pot. Okay, so what I do is I just take a little bit, put it onto my mat, and now I'm going to just dab here and there with the light pink. So what this does is it now has um, a darker background to reflect against. Okay. And at the same time, it's going to give it a little bit of a glisten. Right, let's look it up. And now you can see with a little bit of the black with the paint on it, you get that um, sheen onto the um, product. All right. This paint dries extremely fast. Um, so just be aware when you're working with it. I still heat set the paint because I'm going to then add something on top of it. You'll see I haven't cut it apart yet because at the moment I'm working as a composition of the three together. Um, and that way it helps you to see the color visually when it goes onto your layout. If you work with them individually, you'll have three individual looking ones. But if you work with them together, you'll have three that match, although they'll be individuals. All right. And then we're going to take a pigment ink. I'm just using the Brilliance, the Archival, the Galaxy Gold. Okay. And all we're going to do is we're going to just swipe the ink pad over the painted surface. And what this does is it gives it a, another dimension, a different tone to it. We could have left it as it was, but I just think that just a little bit of the gold tends to give it a little bit of a highlight here and there. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Now you can see the different colors that are coming out. It just creates a little bit of interest, and we can work with that. All right. 
What's so, great about that is holding that PD on the side. Glenda, you saved your fingernails today. <laughs> I don't know so much. You see, my fingers already looking a little bit grungy. But anyway, we have to do some work. <laughs> yep, that's it. All right, so now we've got ours. Now you can feel as you touch it. How do we know when the ink's dry? When you touch it, it's not wet or it's not tacky. All right, so you can uh, heat set this. Absolutely, we can. I want to just see while we're busy working with this how the crackle's coming on. Okay, have a look. Can you see the crackles are starting to appear? Okay. Mm, gives it a nice glisten. The gold as well is amazing color as well. With I can't remember the name of the of the color, but this um, Russian white is is amazing. Mari Smith has just said she joined a little late. What paint was used on the two piece before the brilliant thing? It was the um, the dilutions uh, paint, black marble, and then it was the sparks, the Prima sparks, butterfly spells. Thanks. Okay. All right. Sparks is one of my favorite color or favorite paints. Um, they are just oh, unicorn hair. Um, there's just oh, they're amazing colors. All right. Lauren Freeman has just sent you a wonderful compliment saying that Merlot is a magnificent range. Thank you, Lauren. Lauren, Lauren Friedman. Huh? Lauren Friedman. Well, enjoy and have fun. We'd love to see what you're creating with it. Okay, could I now put on top of this? Could I put some of the brilliance on, onto this? Absolutely, but I'm going to leave it quite intense. If I want to, can I go back into it and put more color onto it? I'm just going to just dry this because remember, while it is still wet, you can blend. When it is dry or heat set, it's then permanent. So as you can see, as you start to dry, can you see that the heat changes from an almost an intense black, okay? And it now intensifies the color. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the black. Not well, hickory smoke, actually. Okay, this is black soot, and that one there is hickory smoke. So you saw previously. Now could I have could put the the distress um, spray stain on top of this? Absolutely, it would act as if you were using water. All right. So I'm not going to now, I'm just moving it out of the way. And I'm going to now heat set it a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of water because the water activates the oxide uh, part of the distress ink. And I'm going to just pick up a little bit of the color. So when you say it activates it, what do you mean? Okay, so as it is, it doesn't become the oxidizing factor of the distress oxides don't uh, take part until it is used with water and heat. So it doesn't become opaque until you put water with it. Okay, so now, and now you can pick up color, you can move the color as you work with it. Okay. By adding water, we can now lift the color as well. Okay. Quick and easy. Ready to go into your layout. I'm just drying this so that it doesn't, so you can see the intensity of the color. Okay. All right, so that's basically what happens with Chipboard. If you had have used an uncoated chipboard, by this stage you would have had it either um, like fluffing or you'd find that it is actually going to move around. Thank you, Peter. Um, and then what happens is, is that it actually starts to lose the integrity of the, um, the board. So that's why we've used this one. All right, so that's the one. Now these ones are here. We're going to now cut the end one. Now, you can either take the Merlot paper and you can cut it into threads, into thin strips, and you can thread it through. But um, I tend to be a little bit of a, a ribbon and tulle fan. So for me, it gives it a softer feel. So I just used a fine, fine tulle. Um, this I cut up into a, a thread. And 
just remember, this is what it looks like. It's too thick for it. But when you start to pull it and you start to thread it through, you're then going to be able to thread through the actual um, things. And it's going to be the right or the correct width. All right. I just use a darning needle. Okay. And you will then thread it. I hope we can see through this today. All right. I'm going to just use show you it on my layout as well so you can see. And then you just sort of thread it through the actual chipboard. So I while Glenda's it. doing her bit of sewing there, I'll tell you that every time we have traveled to the United States, Glenda goes to Michael's and buys out every bit of tulle ribbon. <laughs> and then guess who ends up carrying it home? <laughs> because there's never enough space in Glenda's suitcase. <laughs> I have to stock up. I mean, it's just really, really different. But this one, I think, was actually bought at one of the haberdashery stores. Believe it or not, they had this on, and it really She's worked. All the other stuff, and had to buy it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> what do you think? It's really, it's like, I've got a few pieces of the white and the cream. It's just because they're actually soft, and they're just in rolls that I can manage. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I'm not going to do the whole one, but you can get the idea of it working through the actual chipboard, okay? And I use that on my layout. Over here. Okay, I'm going to just work okay. So there, so there's the plain chipboard that we've just colored with oxide um, sprays, and these are the two. Now, could we have thread a uh, ribbon through here? Absolutely, but I just wanted a bit of a variety. So here we've got just the normal one, um, and then they've just painted, and this has got tulle, plain, and that's the oxide out of the three. And then I really tried to find a home for the little heart one, but I'll have to create another layout with that one. Okay, with this one, this decorative one. We'll just have to find another layout to create. Okay, any questions so far? All right, I think. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the word sentiments. Now, what I really like about these word sentiments is that they are engraved. So, can I color them like I've just colored with the um, with the oxide sprays? Absolutely. But I'm not even going to do that. I actually use them plain as they are. Um, I've also done others where you've taken just the um, Brilliance ink pad. And you can swipe the Brilliance ink pad over it as well. You can paint them if you want. Um, it's really up to you. But out of this entire one, I have just used, I wanted to just show you these um, little uh, decorative tiles at the, in, in here. Okay, so I'm just going to roughly cut out a set of three. Because if you had to work with these individually, what happens is you land up fussing over all of these little pieces. Okay. So, exactly the same thing concept as what we did before. Oxide. Okay, why do we want to use oxides? Because I'm wanting to make the actual design darker. Right? Could I have used red? Could I have used black, um, green, gold? That's really up to you. Okay, this is not <laughs> my favorite, but I like to push it into... Um, into it because that way I know that it's actually going to go into the chipboard. So My I guess fingers. we owe you a pedicure Christmas. A manicure, sorry. Only yes, only when I'm on holiday. <laughs> All right. Um, and believe it or not, it does come off. You just need one of those craft scrubbers, which I believe they've now discontinued, but those are really, really great. Okay, so can you see now that the black has now penetrated into the engraved? Normally, I would use all this ink that I've now got around, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to clean. All right, and then we would heat it. Okay. Now, I leave those little burrs on it on the side for a while because they are easy to hold, and it helps you to control them. And then afterwards, I will cut them or trim them off either with a blade um, or a craft knife, um, or else we will just um, use scissors, it's up to you, and then color the edges with a um, distress marker. You can use an ink pad, but I just find that the distress markers is ink anyway, 
and it's just a lot easier to get into the little um, into corners and things like that. Okay. Okay. All right. And then all we do when that is dry and it's a little bit cool, because right now it's quite toasty, it's holding it onto one of the burrs, or you can put it straight onto the ink pad and you can just swipe over it. If your ink pad is not, if your ink is not dry, you're going to transpose that onto your, uh, the ink that's wet onto your ink pad and then you're going to have a damaged ink pad. Okay. And I'm going to clean that with a little bit of paper towel and water and grab it onto your ink pad if you do get a transfer of other color onto your ink pad. Okay. So you can now decide where you want to add more intense gold. You could use silver, you could use um, rose gold. The color box um, ink pads are really, really great for oh, that as well. A piece of jewelry. It does. Okay. Um, if you have a look, um, this one here, these ones here, um, on the Penelope D Facebook page, you'll actually have a look and see there's one of the brand ambassadors, Monel von Amava. Um, she created a Bible journaling page where she fussy cut, I think, thousands of roses to make a Christmas tree. And then she turned these into Christmas ornaments um, on her Bible page. So that was pretty clever. I've just used mine natural on my um, on mine. Um, and I've also used all of these natural. The only thing that I really worked with um, was this one. I just techniqued was this one. Okay. So let's go on to that. Any questions there? No, Taryn just says she needs to buy a gold brilliance ink pad as well. Wow, that's great. That's one of my favorites, all time stocks. Um, I don't know if there's any other ink pads that do the same thing. You know, the, the joy of the gold brilliance is that it's the one metallic ink pad that tends to dry up on a shiny surface yes. without embossing powder. So it's a really versatile ink pad. And I also find that it also tends to be more opaque than a lot of the others mm -hmm. as well. So it's Lovely. more intense color. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. So this is now our family and friends. We are going to work with that. Okay. All right. Just as a, an interest sake, the, all of these have been designed to work with the uh, Penelope D, um, what we call it, quote sheet, where all the little circles and things that, that you can punch out actually fit on top of it. All the circles that are, are needed to be punched are designed to fit pre-made punch sizes. So whether it's a, a quarter inch, a half inch, seven eighths of an inch, one inch. Um, so in all my layouts, I've actually created um, domes, if you want to call them, um, flares, what people call them. Um, so I use those. Some of them actually fit into um, where the plain chipboard, the open chipboard is. Okay. So this one, we've got the Penelope D. So I'm going to work with it upside down. Um, any guesses what I'm going to color it with first? Okay. All right. All right. So now what I've done is with this one, you can see that it's now stuck. Now it almost looks gray. All right. And then I'm not going to activate it with water. I am just going to heat set it. All right. And now we're going to just pick up some of the extra color. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, a little bit of uh, the black paint that was on, that I used previously, picking up the gray. And now we will intensify this. Okay. Could I use a black ink pad? Yes. Um, what I really enjoy with this one as well, using the black, is the um, Nocturne, I think it's called, by the VersaFine Clear Ink. It remains wet for quite a while, but just know that if it doesn't have something underneath, it will not dry on the um, glossy chipboard. Okay. 
but we can just wipe it straight off. So if you once you've got the oxide, you can then add on top of it. Okay, now I'm going to intensify the black by just by pressing a little bit more intense and with a bit more brute force onto the actual text part of it. And we can just go around the edge as well. If I needed more, I could actually just pick up some more from the, ink, the pot and add more. But I don't want it too intense that it makes it pitch black. All right. Okay. Can you see that? It's really okay. Yeah. Yep. Lovely. All right. And then we will then take our heat tool and we will then heat set it. Now, I've used a combination on mine of using the Brilliance and the um, Metallic Wax Vintage Gold. All right, so here we can see that it's now got a, almost like a sheen to it because we've used the acrylic paint, um, the Dilutions acrylic paint. You can see certain parts it like has a shine. But we're going to take the Brilliance and we are now going to apply that. As you swipe over it, you will see. Okay, it starts to pick up the color. All right. All right. Okay, so I leave my wax for the last part of it because most of the product will be will repel um, the product if you use that first. So if I had to put paint over the wax, it doesn't always help. It doesn't work. So sometimes the only one that I find that really works is the um, the Prima, the Sparks, the acrylic paint. Okay, so now I really make sure that it's quite, um, and now I just touch it here and there, just on the words. Because now I'm highlighting that family and friends gather here. Could it be for Christmas? Absolutely. Could it be a Sunday lunch? Could it be a picnic? Could it be anything? Anything to do with family and friends could work with this title. Okay. All right. So now you can do it. Don't overthink the process um, because then you start to like plan, well, I only want the eye with pink and then you are going to get frustrated when it doesn't land up on just the eye. Okay. Sometimes we need to embrace imperfection to achieve something. Most of us are imperfect. Uh, absolutely. It took me a long time to realize that um, if something was a millimeter art, I could cut it to the best of my ability, but it was the heart was. All right, and now we're going to add some wax. Now, I'm using the old trusted friend called my finger, if, as long as it hasn't got black paint all over it. Okay. And now you're just going to just rub it over the edge. The more you put on, the more intense. Just remember, if too much, you will actually go into the engraved areas and then it's going to be very difficult to take them out. So you could use a whole combination of different colors. Okay. You could use silver with this. You could use a red with it. You could use pink. Um, you can decide which ones that you really want to work with. Okay. All right. Okay, if you want to, you can just do a little bit of dusting over your words just to tie it in if you would like to do that. And there's your doily. Mm -hmm. All right, and then you will then trim off all the little burrs and then you will just ink them with um, your um, distress marker. I think on these ones I used ground espresso on mine. Okay. All right. So that's all of that. Any questions from this one? No, we have no questions. You've also covered all points. All right. So now 
we're going to see how well. Um, Where's that to tell you that there's 43 people watching you live? Oh, wow. Well. Okay. No pressure. All right. So let's get going on this one. Okay. So let's have a look and see what this one's done. Okay. Let's have a look. Okay. If you want to zoom in, or should I lift it up? You can see that the crackle has really, really started to show. Um, we could leave it longer. Okay. But for today's purposes, we're going to just work with it. It's not, it's dry enough to work with. All right, so I'm just going to move all of this over onto the side because we don't need any of this. Okay. All right, and now we're going to take um, our oxide colors. Um, I still like to do with the oxide colors just as swatches on my... And yes, I could have done it on the um, pad, the sheet that's on the on there, but in transporting, mine got damaged today. Okay, so what got damaged, Emma? my sheet, you know, the um, silicon sheet, oh, the mat that goes on yeah. top. Luckily, I've got a contact. <laughs> Thank goodness, yes. Okay, so now we're going to use a water brush with a fine tip making sure that there is water in the ink as well. Um, I like to just give it a light spritz just to activate the oxide ink. And what I do is, is on my actual paper, I am going to just secure this so that I don't go all over the show. And I just give it a light spritz with water just to um, prepare the surface. Water and paper don't really go, but for this it works. As long as you do it softly, and lightly, not drowning the paper. And now you're going to pick up the different color and you are going to work through the colors. Now, the more intense it is, so you can add more water. I keep a bit of a water well on the side so that I can wash the brush and then blend through. Okay. As you work through the different colors, you can blend them and they will then start to work through the cracks in the okay so you can decide how intense you want to make the color you can make your own color as long as it's not mud okay and as you work through it you can see now how the actual embellishment uh, crackle mousse Okay, it starts to actually shine through the, now I would then heat set to this um, to dry the ink, but you can actually see how the coloring works through the crackle mousse. Okay, all right, and then the layout, let's get the layout so you can see it in. There we go. Can you see? We can see. In this area, I've done lots of them all over. It was actually quite, it was a lot of fun to work with the colors and to see how the colors blended and worked with it. The um, the one, the scattered straw, is actually quite an, an un, it actually tends to soften the pinks as you work through them as well. Also yes, absolutely. All right. Okay, these are all fussy cut elements. Okay, there you can see that's one of the um, circles that we've used, okay, that we've punched, and then we've used an epoxy dome on top of it. All right, so all of these are punched from paper that was left over. Um, you can see which ones you would like, and then you can just make your own circles. Um, yeah, and that's about it. Okay. All right, in the collection pack um, for Merlot, it was a A4 uh, bonus sheet, that or embellisher sheet. Um, and a lot of these that I've used on my single layout, like that one and that, and that are all fussy cut out of the bonus sheet. A lot of fussy cutting out with flowers. And then there's the little gold, um, little uh, decorative 
embellishments. I think what's been lovely to see in this range is the amount of cards that have been made as well. Yes, absolutely. So I think these bonus sheets are just fantastic yeah. for card making. Um, and what's really nice as well is that you can stack these and, as well and, and then create a, a different effect, a dimension, yes. The only um, embellishment that I haven't worked with is the Christmas tag one, mm -hmm. um, but that's for the Christmas, Christmas layout. layout. So this is family and friends at this point in time. And I think that's one thing that we always strive to do is to, to offer more than just a themed paper so if you want to take just some of the papers and use them you don't have to stick to a, a particular theme i'm just going to just draw this because wrinkle paper and me don't do well i struggle when the paper tends to warp and do its thing so i just add a little bit of heat because my crackles have already set so i'm not worried about it it's the more the color of the ink that i'm all wanting to set Maybe you come inside of my desk. <laughs> okay all right, is there any other questions? That's all that we are going to do today. No, everyone just has absolutely loved it. Great. I can see there's lots of hearts, lots of thumbs up, and lots of absolute gasping cries. Sure, okay. Lovely, thank you. Thank you, and we'll see you at the next one. Absolutely, but Linda, maybe you should let them know about your little free gift you're sending out. Okay, so just because we can, um, all those that have attended the, day, the webinar today um, are going to get the instructions to complete the single layout. So those will be on their way um, this afternoon because Linda has got a double billing today. She's doing a ProTech webinar as well because she is just so good at showing her techniques. Thank you, Lynn. All right, have a wonderful weekend and happy crafting. Thank you. Take care. Bye. -bye. Bye.